What's happening everybody? Brian Silva for How To Be A PJ. Today, like, like I promised, I know it's been a minute, but I told you guys I was gonna tell you how, to, how we ended up picking this anchor up out of the ocean. And today, that's what I'm gonna talk to you about. So if you wanna see more videos like this or watch any of the other videos that I have on here, make sure you subscribe, like it, and share it with your friends. So there I was, this was on a deployment, uh, you know, somewhere in a crappy place that you don't really want to be. So we, uh, we'd been there for a couple months now, we knew the lay of the land, um, we knew the air crew, and honestly we didn't get too many missions during this deployment. There were a couple, but it was just kind of like, alright, in between time, you're trying to also do upgrade training, so it's not like you're just doing nothing whenever there aren't a ton of missions. You're still shooting for people's upgrade, uh, team leader, everything, so it's nonstop. So no matter what, you're still doing stuff. You're still doing jumps, you're still doing dives, you're still doing whatever you can. Obviously, mission dependent. For this one, we were out and uh, we came across, we were doing like a just regular training dive, and then uh, we were out there and we came across this anchor some people actually I think we got tipped off by some people they're like yeah we always see this anchor down there it was in a place where like nobody owned this or anything like that it wasn't some uh, somebody else's anchor that we took or anything uh, it was just a thing that was right there in the bottom of the ocean you guys can go reference that picture it's it was a pretty big anchor um, it was taller than me wider than wider than me, wider than you know my arm span, so it's a pretty heavy freaking anchor. So we were like, oh crap, we're you know centered on a navy type of compound. Why don't we just like they don't have an anchor at this compound? It's it's a pretty huge place. So why don't we figure out how to get this anchor back for them? That would be awesome for them to display because if you don't know, like the navy likes to display an anchor in front of their base as as a tradition. So we were like, yeah, we are gonna do this thing. We're gonna get this anchor, and we're gonna bring it up 80 feet out of the ocean, and then we're gonna fly it back, or however we have to do it, we're gonna get it back to the base. The base is like 10 miles away or something like that. Um, I don't know, give or take, it was a, it was a long haul. Um, so we ended up coming up with this plan. This, my friend, uh, my other PJ friend, Isaac, and then a couple of the other guys, uh, but mainly Isaac and I, we we were just like, all right, let's sit down, let's whiteboard this thing and figure out how we're going to do this, who we need to have involved, and what kind of time frames we're looking at as far as getting this thing done. So I was an LM leader at the time. Um, Isaac, I think, was getting to his, his uh, LM leader upgrade at that point in time. We had a couple other guys that were doing that. And part of the unique thing about pararescuement is that our job is also to plan missions. Like we're also the PR planners. When we go to, we attach to SEAL teams, we attach to whoever we attach to. Our job is also gonna be the primary planners for personnel recovery in general. Like I've done it on many of the teams that I've been on, um, just coming up with a med plan for the whole team. Like something goes south, then we plan to that. So that's another one of the unique things, and we also have team leader positions, whereas, you know, CCT and some of the other guys like TACP, they're traditionally just attached. They don't work as a, a single team like PJs do. So that's another thing that's uh, kind of important. So we're gonna be like, in our job, we're gonna be briefing colonels and majors and all that telling them exactly why we plan this one way and why we plan things a certain way. So that's why this type of uh, task is unique to pararescue. Anyways, so like I said, we, we planned everything down to the Nats ass on the whiteboard and <clears throat> we were gonna execute that. So first thing, we talked to the air crew, made sure they were cool with it, made sure that they were able to lift that weight, made sure that they were you know qualified to do that make sure everything was in order with that because that was a big linchpin. If we couldn't get it anywhere, then you know what's the point of bringing it up? After that, we built up our boards. Um, Isaac and I spent like, I don't know, all night basically that one night. We, we pretty much like put all of our energy into this. We were like really focused, obviously went to the gym and ate and stuff, 
but we pretty much put as much time as we could into this thing just trying to get this anchor up so all day was planning all night was building this platform and the platform was the size of the zodiac because our plan was to build this platform that can sustain it out of wood um, that can float on top of the zodiac once it's inflated and hold the anchor in place without obviously sinking the zodiac and they're able to hold that much weight definitely and we had an extra one so we were okay with on that and the logistics side we ended up building that thing and then we ended up um you know everything was to plan ready to go obviously we spent lots of time planning all this stuff but it was go time um in two days we made sure all the tanks and everything all those dives were set up but that was like a natural thing we always set up our dives and tanks and all of our dive master type of stuff isaac and i were running dive tables with the help of another guy um, Tony, we went to the site, started diving, took turns, um, placing the lift bags. If you guys don't know what the lift bag is, it's basically like a <clears throat> thick, uh, strong plastic type of bag that you put air into and it inflates and brings up to the surface. Basically, it just creates buoyancy for whatever object you tie it to. So, we put four lift bags on there. Um, actually, we doubled up on a couple because we didn't have the gigantic 500 pounds we'd have that many of them so anyways we put them on four attachment points um, one at the top center and then on the two sides the only other thing that we were worried about was the anchor breaking as we were lifting it up because the uh, rope that we had was obviously pretty thin we didn't we didn't have anything that was easy to use um, so we were watching out for it like breaking because obviously it's kind of brittle we don't know how long it's been down there so if we lifted it up and it broke in half that would kind of suck so we um, put some little supports underneath as we tied it together to the attachment points so we did all that we were ready to lift up we had then we put scent divers in uh, to control the top and bottom of it so we had to lift it evenly in four separate points with four different divers um, talking to each other because we had the full face mask so we we're talking to each other and we were just like okay you just like you know all over try to make it as evenly distributed lifting the lift bags as possible that took a little bit got it to the surface you're like all right it's on the surface now and then the waves started coming in and it started dumping the the bags so you're like all right we got to have a guy that's at each each of the locations to make sure that none of the air spills out and then we had another part of the team that got the boards ready to go so we can put it under the anchor and get that anchor on top of the surface. So obviously that board is made out of wood. So that was another really difficult part was just getting that piece of wood down underneath because we couldn't, we had to get the, I don't know if you can see that, the uh, anchor was like five feet under the surface because the tether and the length of the bag was just, I mean, that was as short as we could make it. So you had to get that board all the way down underneath there without tipping the anchor and making it spill out the air from the lift bags. So that was another like uh, difficult point in the process. Once we got that done, we put the Zodiac underneath, not a big deal. Started inflating the Zodiac. It inflated awesome. We didn't have any problems with that and it was on the surface. Then we called in the aircraft, got it to come pick up that anchor. And that, that took about 15, 20 minutes because the tether for the, uh, that we're gonna hook up the anchor to was only like 15 feet long. So the air aircraft had to be hovering 15 feet above the boat where the dudes had to hook it up. So there was like very limited room and very limited um, like slack for the guys to make sure that they clipped it on without the aircraft moving side to side. If you it's hard for the uh, aircraft, especially if there's any wind, to make sure they maintain a stable hover. So, fighting through that, there are some cool pictures on that. I think I posted one of them, like, in one of my earlier Instagram posts. You can check it out. Just two dudes underneath an aircraft in a raft. Um, I'll try and post a video also so you guys can check that out. But So, that was another thing that... <laughs> just took a lot of time and the dudes kept on falling off because the, they're standing on a zodiac just a piece of wood plywood 
while the aircraft came up and the 53s which we were using super heavy super big um, helicopters so they create a lot of rotor wash so it's pretty like it's pretty difficult to stay on there as the rotor wash is going just on land but in the water obviously it adds another element of it being slippery and stuff flying everywhere so um, the rest of it is we we got that attached we saw it flying away it was attached the anchor flew like straight into the wind and we saw it flying back to base by the time we got back to base and pack we had to pack up all of our stuff and drive back <clears throat> by the time we got there the anchor was just sitting there staring at us we took some pics and it was just a good feeling to you know put that much time and effort into something and to see it come together and actually you know see the product of your labor right there in front of you and that base has you know that for the rest of the time that it's going to be around so it's a pretty cool story um pretty cool that i was able to actually be there and do this with the guys and i think the important things to take out of this is that um, nothing went wrong obviously no one got hurt um, we didn't lose any equipment we didn't lose any of this and i think it's just that you know, as PJs, we see a plan, or even as any special operations, we see something that a goal that we have, and we create a plan, and we have to make it as foolproof as possible. Obviously, there are going to be some hiccups, like I said, trying to get that board underneath, or just being under the aircraft. It's difficult sometimes, and you have to take into consideration every single aspect of what you're planning on doing. Just like your workout um, is going today, if you're going to go work out. I set out everything that I need before I go work out in the morning, before I go to work in the morning. I have separate piles for everything just to make sure that I have everything that I need. And I prep my backpack the night before and I make sure that you know my meals are prepped. Just as much as you can possibly prep while you have a spare time and then you can go do whatever you want to do. It's kind of like doing your homework before you go and play. Um, other things are just to make sure that um, good briefs or good to uh, like tell people what you're doing and where you, how you plan on doing it, where you plan on going, um, and communication. I mean, you're gonna hear this in a lot of the videos that people talk about is just communication, both with you know the people in the aircraft or your team is gonna really make or break the scenario. Like if we weren't able to communicate while we were down there, like I said, we were lifting the bags four at a time. We had to communicate and say, hey, 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 whoa, whoa, that's enough on that side, you on this side, lower lower left end, whatever it is, um, or the guy's initials. Just need to be on top of that, need to be able to communicate, and need to be on the same page and patient enough to where, all right, dudes are going to make mistakes, we'll talk about this stuff later, whatever you messed up, just press on, this is what we need to do right now, keep on moving on with the mission, and not get caught up with this BS, all right? So... Those are just some of the important points. Hopefully, you know, it was an interesting story for you. Like I said, I'm just really privileged to have been able to do stuff like this that I've done. And hopefully this helps you out a little bit. Preparedness is really important and one of the biggest factors on whether or not a mission is successful. So make sure you're practicing that now and your everyday, setting up your gear, setting up your, your stuff before you go to bed, meal prepping, all that stuff is going to help you out and these habits are going to make you a better operator in the future. I appreciate you guys watching the video. Make sure you subscribe and like it and share it. And if you guys have any comments or if you would have done it a different way, um, let me know. And I'll keep on doing these things. I'll see you guys on the next one.